Six years ago, on the eve of the grand reopening of Gotham National Bank, Sam Deke hosted a celebration for his co-workers, to mark the bank's transition to modern banking. During the event, the Red Hood gang rushed in, angry about the bank's changes, and demanded money from the vaults. They revealed a special skeleton key, that granted them undetected access to the vault. The gang leader tells everyone, to remember how things were done in the past at Gotham National. Back then, people had to lie down quietly without making noise during a robbery, and nobody got hurt. He warns the gang not to harm anyone this time, and tells the Red Hood gang to steal everything they can from the victims. In the chaos, a gang member attacked and severely injured Sam, by hitting him with a gun. The gang leader tells Red Hood 5 to take off his hood, and put the gun to his own head. Red Hood 5 is confused, and asks why he has to do that. The gang leader takes a deep breath, and tells Red Hood 5 to do as he's told. Red Hood 5 is confused by the gang leader's accusations. The leader pointed out inconsistencies in the imposter's behavior, like using his right hand instead of being left-handed. The gang leader suggests Red Hood 5 might be an undercover cop. The gang leader tells Red Hood 5 to kill himself, or they'll harm him more. Red Hood 5 agrees not to hurt anyone inside. Mockingly, the Red Hood revealed, they had poisoned the celebration cake the day before, killing all the bank employees. Realizing his mistake, Bruce Wayne, hidden among the gang, pushed his way through and escaped from the scene. The Gotham police see, that Red Hood has something in his hand, and they think it might be a gun. The Gotham City Police Department was waiting outside for the Red Hood gang. As the gang emerged, they spotted the police, and immediately began shooting at them. The police then radioed for backup, warning that they were under fire. Bruce quickly made a daring escape when the shooting started. He ran, slid under a police car, and then slipped into a nearby manhole. There, he changed out of his costume, and got his hidden motorcycle. He called Alfred to open the back door of his hideout. The Red Hood gang was chasing him closely. Alfred was unsure about using the advanced computers, but luckily, Bruce managed to get away safely. Bruce had left Wayne Manor, and moved to a brownstone near Crime Alley, when he returned to Gotham City. He filled it with high-tech tools and vehicles for his mission. Alfred suggests modifying the brownstone for easier access from the south. Bruce interrupts him, declaring the brownstone as his new home, not just a property. Alfred apologizes, Bruce emphasizes, that his parents died very close to their new home's front door, making it the place, he feels he needs to be to start his mission. Alfred questions, how successful his mission has been so far. Bruce admits he's making progress, though not as quickly as he'd like. Bruce thinks he should be better at fighting crime, with all his tech and weapons, without anyone knowing it's him. But he feels like something important is missing, and he doesn't know what it is yet. Alfred suggests that returning to the family home, might help Bruce reconnect with himself as Bruce Wayne. Bruce disagrees, saying the Bruce Wayne persona isn't important. It's his true self that needs to develop. Bruce was eager to test a new boomerang-like device he had invented, designed to leave no trace behind. Sneaking onto the building's roof, he set it to return to him in 30 seconds, and threw it against a wall. When the timer ran out, the device released itself from the wall and returned to his hand, proving successful. Wanting to test it further, he set it for a four-minute return, and threw it again. Just as he began counting down, Alfred arrived with police lieutenant Jim Gordon, interrupting his experiment. Bruce, aware that his device would return in about four minutes, hurriedly tried to lead lieutenant Gordon inside. However, Gordon needing a smoke break, made Bruce have to make their conversation faster. Gordon came to discuss concerns about Bruce's cousin, Philip Kane, potentially involving Wayne Enterprises in shady business practices. Despite Gordon's suspicions, Bruce claimed ignorance about any illegal dealings. Before leaving, Gordon asked Bruce about rumors of a high-tech vigilante in the area. He cautioned that supporting this vigilante would be a serious issue. Bruce tried to divert Gordon's attention, by suggesting that they both seemed to be on a similar mission. With this shared perspective, they headed back inside, just as Bruce's boomerang returned to him. Nearby, the Red Hood gang identified Bruce's brownstone, and decided it was time to destroy it completely. 